We are coming to you from the Verizon Wireless Arena in Manchester, New Hampshire for the 12th annual Fight to Educate, a evening of boxing with proceeds going to the Bobby Stevens Fund for Education and New Horizons for New Hampshire. It is just about time for our main event of the evening. 2008 United States Olympic alternate, the immensely popular Danny Boy O'Connor, hailing from Framingham, Massachusetts, will take on a Texas native Raul Tovar. My name is Peter Zimbor. I'll have the call of the action here in Manchester, New Hampshire. The very arena where Danny O'Connor made his pro debut in the fall of 2008. Since then, O'Connor has accrued a record of 22 wins against just one loss, seven wins coming by way of knockout. His opponent tonight, Tovar, sports the record of a journeyman, 11 wins, seven losses, one draw, four of his 11 wins coming by way of knockout. However, that does not tell the entire story. Tovar and O'Connor are familiar with one another. Despite the fact that Tovar sports the record of a journeyman, as I put it, as you hear the loud reaction to Danny O'Connor being announced the crowd here in Manchester. Despite Tovar sporting an 11-7-1 record, he does own a victory over Danny O'Connor in the amateurs when they met up in the Nationals. It was Danny O'Connor's first venture at the national level as an amateur boxer, and Tovar proved to be victorious. Earlier tonight in the locker room, while talking to Raul Tovar about that experience, he says he remembers Danny O'Connor being a southpaw and being fast. It was a close, tough fight, but he felt that he definitively won, and that was the official verdict. Round one of a scheduled eight-round contest. This is in the welterweight division. O'Connor weighed in a pound under the welterweight limit at 146 pounds at yesterday's official weigh-in. Tovar at 149 pounds, there was a two pound allowance contracted in this bout. It is O'Connor wearing the black trunks with the silver trim and green lettering. And it is Tovar wearing the blue trunks with the white trim. Round one of a scheduled eight rounder here in Manchester, New Hampshire. From the get-go, O'Connor flicking that right-hand jab, that lead right hand out at Tovar. This fight is scheduled for eight rounds. Raul Tovar attempted unsuccessfully to try to make this fight at six rounds as opposed to eight, as he felt that would suit him better. Nevertheless, he ultimately relented to it being an eight-round fight. With Danny O'Connor sporting a 22-1 and one record at this point. Probably not too far off from the 10 and 12 rounders. And felt that 8 would be best suited to his career moving forward. Nice right hand splits the guard of Tovar. Nice right hand by Danny O'Connor. Gets the attention of both Raul Tovar and the crowd here in Manchester. Best punch landed in the fight for either fighter. Certainly enough to win Danny O'Connor the round thus far. Though it got everyone excited and it certainly landed and had an adverse effect on Tovar. Tovar has recouped rather nicely. Nice lead right hand once again by Danny O'Connor. Lands right in the grill of Tovar. Round one comes to a conclusion here in Manchester, New Hampshire. And a definitive opening frame for Danny O'Connor. O'Connor hails from 
south of New Hampshire in Framingham, Massachusetts. That's his hometown. A former standout athlete at Framingham High School on the wrestling mat. Took up boxing and became very successful at it with his career as an amateur culminating with a spot as an Olympic alternate for the 2008 United States boxing team. Perhaps most impressively about O'Connor being that 2008 United States Olympic alternate is the fact that that Olympics eventual gold medal winner in O'Connor's weight class, a fighter from the Dominican Republic, O'Connor previously had defeated via stoppage. So at one time was amongst the best amateurs in the world in his respective weight class, now in the pro ranks, vying to be one of the best professional fighters in the world in his respective weight class. Welterweight division certainly stacked right now. It's the marquee division in boxing. Nice left hand by Danny O'Connor. We've seen him have success with that lead right in the first, this time following up with that power left. As I was saying, the welterweight division has been the marquee division in boxing in recent years. With fighters like Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao frequenting the weight division for some super fights. And on the outskirts of Pacquiao and Mayweather, you have fighters who accrue a lot of name recognition like Juan Manuel Marquez, Tim Bradley, Miguel Cotto. And while some have moved up to the 154-pound weight class in recent years, they still seem very comfortable fighting at welterweight when need be. Round two of the scheduled eight-rounder between Danny O'Connor and Raul Tovar. Right hand attempt by Tovar, but O'Connor able to catch it on his gloves. Danny O'Connor with a nice right hand. Raul Tovar seemed a bit surprised by the reaction that Danny O'Connor got. Not at tonight's fights, because he expected O'Connor to be the fan favorite here in Manchester, but yesterday at the official weigh-ins for this bout. Said that they were treating Danny O'Connor like a king. And... He was hoping to leave O'Connor's many supporters going home unhappy as Tovar is rocked with the right hand by Danny O'Connor. Tovar almost went down to a knee. His legs clearly buckled here in round number two. Well, if Danny O'Connor won round one based on the effectiveness of that lead right hand and that one thwapping punch which got everyone's attention, round two he has clearly won with that right hand which buckled the legs of Raul Tavar, who nearly took a knee. Danny O'Connor hailing from Framingham, Massachusetts which is significantly south of us here in Manchester, New Hampshire, but certainly within driving distance. And O'Connor has proven to be quite the attraction on the New England circuit. Earlier this year, headlined the first professional boxing show at the famed Boston Garden since 2007 with a dominant decision win over New England welterweight champion Derek Silvera. And the garden that night was rocking nearly as loud as when the Boston Celtics won the NBA Finals and when the Boston Bruins won the Stanley Cup. O'Connor has plenty of fanfare coming from his hometown of Framingham and beyond Framingham 
has really endeared himself to a lot of New England fight fans and casual sports fans due to his affiliation with the very popular Celtic punk band, the Dropkick Murphys, who are from the area. The bass player and singer Ken Casey is now involved in O'Connor's career as his manager. Round three of the scheduled eight rounder. Beyond the hometown love and the nice rub from the Dropkick Murphys, Danny O'Connor, immensely likable and personable with fans and media alike, and very good with social media as well. As he's proven to be quite popular with fight fans on Twitter. Once again, round three of the scheduled eight rounder, Danny O'Connor and Raul Tovar. O'Connor has the first two rounds in the book, at least on our scorecard. We're coming to you from the Verizon Wireless Arena in Manchester, New Hampshire. A Thursday night. And it is pouring buckets outside. Never mind the fact that the New England Patriots are hosting the New York Jets south of us in Foxborough. Plenty of supporters here tonight for Danny O'Connor. Tovar with a right hand. Don't know how much of it landed on the face of Danny O'Connor. Looks like he caught a significant portion of that punch on the glove. Tovar, game coming forward. Thus far has been outclassed to a degree by O'Connor. Nice body shot by O'Connor with the right hand. Comes upstairs with the left. Nothing O'Connor has done thus far has been too much of a deterrent for Tovar coming forward. However, O'Connor clearly is outboxing the Texan. The most telling shot of the fight that had Tovar in trouble was that right hand in the second round, which had his legs buckle and nearly put him to his knees. Nice left hand by O'Connor, and Tovar is going to clinch shortly thereafter. Just a few seconds remaining in round number three. And this appears to be another textbook round for Framingham's Danny O'Connor here in Manchester, New Hampshire. And you can hear the chants of Danny O permeate throughout the arena here in Manchester. Interestingly, O'Connor not just popular in his home region of New England, but also has proven to be quite popular in Europe as well. Very popular in Scotland. He's the type of guy that seemingly could spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week, watching the All Soccer Channel, which is available here in the United States, which probably endears him to a lot of his fans overseas. Round four of the scheduled eight rounder, Danny O'Connor and Raul Tovar. O'Connor getting more aggressive, throwing combinations and landing against Tovar here in the early portion of round number four. Tonight, Danny O'Connor with Peter Welch, Mark Vaz in his corner. He's been training under the tutelage of Ronnie Shields, who's worked with the likes of Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield in the past out in Texas. So oddly enough, O'Connor's been training for this fight in Texas. His opponent tonight, Tovar, hails from Mission, Texas.
Ronnie Shields trains another fighter hailing from New England who's garnered quite the bit of attention from boxing fans recently. Worcester, Massachusetts, Edwin La Bamba Rodriguez coming off a big first round knockout win over the very tough Denis Grachev and Monte Carlo and rumored to be challenging for a world title in his next bout, whether it be against WBC champion Saki Obika or perhaps WBA champion and pound-for-pound -pound elite Andre Ward. Rodriguez and O'Connor very close to the extent that Edwin Rodriguez even worked O'Connor's corner in a fight earlier this year against Derek Silvera in Boston. Saw some good flurries of activity for O'Connor here in the early portions of round number four. And now towards the tail end of round number four, it's O'Connor just simply outboxing the tough Texan. And we are now midway through this fight. And it appears that Danny O'Connor is ahead on the scorecards four rounds to none. Once again, you're watching the main event of the 12th annual Fight to Educate show here at the Verizon Wireless Arena in Manchester, New Hampshire. Proceeds from the 12th annual Fight to Educate benefit the SEE Science Center the Bobby Stevens Fund for Education, and New Horizons for New Hampshire. This is a charity venture tonight north of Boston. And lots of support for these various charities here in the arena tonight. Former WBA lightweight champion Ray Boom Boom Mancini in the house. The legendary Aaron Pryor also here. As well as some faces of New England's boxing past, i.e. 90s super middleweight contender Dana Rosenblatt, who was quite the ticket seller during his time competing as a professional boxer throughout the 90s and into the early 2000s. Round five of the scheduled eight-rounder between Danny O'Connor and Raul Tovar. mentioned earlier in the broadcast that this arena was the setting for O'Connor's professional debut in the fall of 2008. And while I'm sure it's a thrill for him to come back to the place where it all began for him as a professional fighter, he's a guy that's been making the rounds throughout some very cool sports venues in the New England region and beyond. We mentioned the Boston Garden earlier last summer earned a TKO win over Providence, Rhode Island's Eddie Soto at Gillette Stadium, home of the New England Patriots. And also com has competed at the normal hot spots for boxing on the New England circuit, the Connecticut Casinos, the MGM Grand at Foxwoods, and the arena at the Mohegan Sun. Nice right hand by O'Connor. Gets the crowd excited.
Haven't seen O'Connor have Tovar in any real danger since that one moment in the second round. But clearly has been outpointing Tovar each and every second of each and every round of this fight to this point. So round five coming to a conclusion. And that should be another round in the books for Framingham's Danny O'Connor. Earlier tonight on the undercard of this Danny O'Connor Raul Tovar main event at the 12th annual Fight to Educate. Vermont's Chris Gilbert improved his record to 10-0 with eight knockouts with a TKO win over Providence, Rhode Island's Anthony the Candyman Chase, who is attempting a comeback, whose record now falls to 11 wins and two losses. Also on the undercard tonight, despite the fact that Springfield, Massachusetts' Jesus Cintron appeared to dominate Maine's Brandon Berry, Cintron was disqualified for repeated low blows that did appear to be legitimate body shots to most people in the arena who are not the referee. So Chris Gilbert and Brandon Berry earn victories tonight on the undercard of this Danny O'Connor Raul Tovar fight, which you are watching right now. Round number six. O'Connor sporting the black trunks with the shiny silver trim and some green lettering. And it's Tovar in the blue trunks with the white trim. There have been times throughout the career of Danny O'Connor where he has worn trunks in the ring in which he designed himself. I can neither confirm nor deny that he's wearing trunks that he designed and sewed himself tonight. And Tovar was hunched over. And O'Connor opted not to throw a left hand at his opponent with his back to him, as it probably would have landed on the back of Tovar's head, causing some controversy. O'Connor, his accuracy has been very good tonight. And while he's not landing too many bombs that are going to bang away at Tovar, this... Accumulation of shots has got to be feeling its effect on the Texan, whose hands touched the canvas just a moment ago, correctly ruled by our official to be a slip as no punch caused him to hit the mat. Back when these two men competed as amateurs, Danny O'Connor made the venture to the Nationals on his own, whereas at that point, Tavar was the more seasoned fighter. It appears that Danny O'Connor has caught up and superseded Mr. Tovar in skill up until this point. We mentioned earlier that Tovar originally wanted this to be a six rounder as opposed to an eight. Well, if this one was a six rounder, it appears at this point it wouldn't necessarily matter as Danny O'Connor is so ahead on the cards that Tavar would need something big. Well, through six, I have O'Connor pitching a shutout thus far. Well, I have the opportunity. would like to thank our cameraman, Mike Simmons, doing a fantastic job tonight, bringing you the sights you see on your screen.
Round seven begins. O'Connor with a nice lead right to begin round seven. So Var looking to get aggressive, but while he got aggressive momentarily, he wasn't necessarily effective. Danny's many supporters in attendance here in Manchester with sporadic shouts of Danny. And here in round seven, Danny O'Connor outclassing Tovar. Tovar not necessarily shutting down into survival mode but he has to know how far behind he is. And in moments where he does get aggressive for a few seconds at a time, as he stumbled off balance as a result of O'Connor blows just moments ago. Tavar needs something big because at this point he is a desperate man with just one round to go as we're in the closing seconds of round number seven here in Manchester. Seven rounds in the books. And it should be seven rounds for Danny O'Connor. Verizon Wireless Arena. Here in the Granite State, where you live free or die. Home of the Manchester Monarchs minor league hockey team, an affiliate of the Los Angeles Kings. I have a tough time understanding the geography that goes behind minor league hockey teams' locations. Worcester, Massachusetts has a minor league hockey team that is an affiliate of the San Jose Sharks. Whereas Manchester, New Hampshire has a minor league hockey team that is an affiliate of the Los Angeles Kings. Seems like hockey. The main team's on one side of the country, the farm team's on the other. See, I like the Red Sox. They've got the Pawtucket Red Sox, and they've got affiliates in nearby Lowell and Maine. They keep most of it in New England. But I digress. Round eight, final round of the scheduled eight rounder in this welterweight tilt between Danny O'Connor and Raul Tovar. Peter Zimbor calling the action here in New Hampshire. O'Connor putting punches together here in round eight. Knows he's well ahead in the scorecards. 
has had Tovar off balance and in trouble at various times in this fight. Truly twice. And while it does appear unlikely at this moment that he'll be able to score a stoppage over Tovar, it's not going to stop him from trying and putting his punches together. Nice left hand by O'Connor. Nice left hand again by Danny Boy. That left hand gets the attention of Tovar. Perhaps with this crowd behind him chanting words of encouragement. He can come close to that stoppage, which has eluded him to this point. Nice left hand by O'Connor again. And O'Connor really finding his timing here in round number eight. And so Var forced to clinch and hang on. Referee letting them break out of the predicament on their own. And closing seconds of this fight. And the final bell sounds. This should be a dominant decision win for Danny O'Connor. Oh, here's the adulation of the many in attendance who came specifically to see him here tonight in Manchester, New Hampshire. O'Connor worked effectively with that lead right hand throughout the duration of the bout. Made Tovar's knees buckle in round number two. Had him off balance later in the fight. And really found his range and timing for that left hand in the eighth and final round. The reading of the scorecards in a mere moment should be nothing more than a formality. It should be an 80-72 to 72 unanimous decision shutout win for Danny O'Connor. We'll wait and hear the official judges' verdicts in just a moment. The crowd responds to the official scorecards being read. A unanimous decision win by Danny Boy O'Connor. 80 to 72, a shutout on one judge's scorecard as I had it. Two of the three judges did give one round to Tovar, giving O'Connor the win by a margin of 79 to 73. Well, that's going to do it for us here at the Verizon Wireless Arena in Manchester, New Hampshire tonight. Danny O'Connor improves to 23 wins and one loss with a unanimous decision win over Texas's Raul Tovar. I'm Peter Zimbor. Thanks for watching.